Good evening and welcome. Saturday the 12th of February. This is our evening prayer service. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though they rise up war against me, yet I will put my trust in him. One thing I have I asked of the Lord, that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 45 My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the King. My tongue is the pen of a skilful writer. You are the most excellent of men and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendour and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let all nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. A sceptre of justice will be the sceptre of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honoured women. At your right hand is the royal bride, in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People with wealth of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her. Led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you for ever and ever. Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters fo roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. 
God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at day, break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 to 13 Solomon, son of David, established himself firmly over his kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him, and made him exceedingly great. Then Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, to the judges and to all the leaders in Israel, the heads of families. And Solomon and the whole assembly went to the high place at Gibeon, for God's tent of meeting was there, which Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. Now David had brought up the ark of God from kiriath Jearim to the place he had prepared for it, because he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar that Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, was in Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the assembly inquired of him there. Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed for you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people, for who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possessions or honour, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you, and I will also give you wealth, possessions and honour, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will, ever, will have. Then Solomon went to Jerusalem from the high place at Gibeon, from before the tent of meeting, and he reigned over Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 
God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. John chapter 16 verses 23 to 33 In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but I will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied. A time is coming, and if in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone. Yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call her blessed. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have looked with favour on your lowly servant, from this day all generations will call her blessed. Father, we thank you for the day that's been so far. We thank you for the tasks that we have undertaken. We thank you for the time that has been spent already in prayer, in reading your word and in listening to your voice. Father, as we come into evening time, we pray now for those we may have met today. For those who 
may have spoken to us of their needs. For those who may have heard of. Lord, we pray for peace. Peace in our world. Peace in our lives. We pray for the Ukraine as foreign visitors to that country are being urged to leave over fears of a Russian invasion. We pray for Canada where the police are trying to clear trucks off the Ambassador Bridge trucks that have blocked supply chains and roads in protests over COVID restrictions. Father, we pray for all parts of the world where there is unrest. We pray for all people who live without peace. We pray for those who are subjected to torture and prejudice. Lord, we pray for world leaders, for community leaders, for individuals, for those who have within their ability the opportunity to bring peace, to stand up for those without a voice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray tonight for the family of two children who have died following a collision on the M4 last Saturday. Lord, we pray for others who may have lost loved ones in accidents recently, car accidents, accidents at work, accidents in the home. We pray for the anguish that inevitably follows the death of a child. We pray for the anger that can often be left when someone is felt to be to blame. Lord, we pray for healing and for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Father, we pray tonight for the individuals on our hearts and minds and on our prayer lists. We pray again tonight for Effie back in hospital. For her parents, for the doctors, that they may be able to find a reason for her recent illnesses. We pray for peace in that family and for resilience and the opportunity, Lord, and the wisdom to know how to live with Effie's condition. Father, we pray for others who live with long-term medical conditions especially those that transform lives and for the loved ones who watch and care and often feel so helpless. We pray for Olive Taylor and her brother Ian. We pray for Josh Iden and his family. We pray for Mo as she cares for George. For Gillian and Graham as they await a transplant for Graham. For Sue and Roger and their long-term illness and issues and for their daughter Amy. Still awaiting a definite diagnosis but living with the symptoms of that undiagnosed condition. We pray for Leah and Kev, for Marianne, for all who live with long-term pain and fatigue. We pray for those who are journeying through cancer and cancer treatments. For June Cottrell as she prepares for surgery. For Margaret as she continues her chemotherapy and prepares for radiotherapy. For those known to us. We pray for those who have recently gone through surgery or, or who are awaiting surgery soon. For Evangeline after her eye operation. For Philip. Father, we pray for those who have recently passed out of this life. We pray for Colin, for those he has left behind, for Kath and Tracy and Christopher. For your peace, for your comfort. We pray for the family of Maureen Williams. We pray for others who have this week been at funerals for the Noki family, for the Cottrell family who had funerals yesterday, for those who are preparing for funerals this coming week. For the family of Jean Baxter. Lord, we pray for those whose situations are less easy to define or 
perhaps more complex. Complicated by mental health issues or by the intervention of agencies meant to help but not always able or willing to do what we might hope. Father, we thank you that we can bring all things to you. We can ask you for wisdom and for understanding, as Solomon did, to know how to pray, how to act, how to best support and speak to those we meet. We thank you that when we ask, you listen and you answer. Help us to be ready to hear your answer, whatever it may be. Help us to be willing to be the answer when that's appropriate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace so to love what you command and to, de to desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. Just a note, there will be no Compline tonight. Vic and I are out with street angels, so pray for us as we're on the streets in the wind and the rain. And we'll be back tomorrow morning with communion at half past ten. So have a good evening. We'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>